Hi everyone, it's Bella and today I am going to go over the Pluto ingress into Aquarius as I just recently did the mundane general astrology horoscope uh, for South Africa for 2022 to 2020, I mean sorry, 2023 to 2024, um, but I didn't have enough time to really go into um, what Pluto in Aquarius um, coming to our ascendant and so forth can possibly um, bring. Now I'm going to just go over it briefly in general um, as it will be affecting the world at large and then of course also our country as our um, ascendant sign um, in the chart that I use is Aquarius rising as I use the um, the chart for 27 April 1994 at 0 hundred hours as it marked the importance and the beginning of the first day that every South African had the freedom to cast a vote, the entirety of that day. Um, now, these interpretations must be considered as suggestions and possibilities, and the public is invited to reflect upon the interpretations and assess if they're worthy of being taken into consideration the public should also know that astrology reflect a potential, but does not offer a guarantee for that potential. Now, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008 until March 23rd of this year, 2023, when it shortly ingressed Aquarius and is there at this time until June of 2023, upon which time it will retrograde back into Capricorn and out again until it finally meets with the sun on January 20th at zero degrees of Aquarius for a 20-year transit. Now, while it was in Capricorn, worldwide it had us exposing corruption, working on deconstructing top-down power, big corporations, and restructuring governments, redistributing power and control structures before it moves more permanently into Aquarius, where we can possibly expect a world government to emerge directed toward equality and humanitarian reforms, or the opposite extreme, dictatorship and a one world order ruled and controlled by possibly technology we can only imagine or some other form. It will largely depend on the willingness of the people to unite against the forces that would rather separate us. We can possibly expect over the next 20 years or so with Pluto here, changes that include topics in powerful innovation and advancement in pen penetrating um, outer space, reality changing um, discoveries in energy, in technology of all fields, very, very powerful computers, virtual reality, sex changes, how we have intercourse, especially without touch, less human pregnancies, androgyny, a more unisex focus, transhumanism and a possible increase in human deaths can also be expected as Pluto will transform the face of humanity on a global scale as it is the planet of not only transformation and purification but also of regeneration. Now the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was between 1778 and 1798, a revolutionary and transformative period of time that changed the way the world viewed power, money, technology, and society as a whole. For example, changes in social order and public rights, including the ratification of the American Constitution, the Industrial Revolution, publishings on women's rights, etc., now, Aquarian triumphs always sound liberating at first, 
but will pursue righteousness and revolution at all costs, unaware of the collateral damage. As Patrick Watson says, the French Revolution toppled a bloated monarchy, but its values of rigid nationalism now fail to integrate religious and ethnic differences. The former Soviet Union is ruled by Aquarius, and we will see much more of them, as their ruler also has Pluto, which rules plutonium and nuclear energy on the midheaven in his chart. And of course, we are also Aquarius rising as South Africans, as well as China. So a lot of the countries that um, has Aquarius as their ascendant will be big players in this new age of Aquarius that we are moving into. Now, Uranus, the modern ruler of Aquarius, rules uranium as well. So we have to remember that Aquarius is ruled by both Saturn as well as Uranus in modern astrology. Structure and change, restriction and freedom, extremes, extreme control or extreme freedom. But Pluto is power and Aquarius the people. So will we take back our power or will we be overpowered? Pluto will be in Aquarius until 2043. Now, Pluto has been in South Africa's 12th house of Capricorn since 2008, where it typically initiates a process of breaking down and transforming the area of life it moves through. Now, in this case, Pluto has been focusing on 12th house issues such as prisons, reformatories, criminals, spies, secret enemies of the country, in the country itself or abroad, hospitals, asylums, institutions for those that are weak, infirmities, um, or in need of charity. Now, this can also take um, under the umbrella the welfare state, possible secret societies and occult religions, and also our patterns of self-sabotage, mental health, endings, as well as spirituality. Now, it also brings these topics, um, especially corruption and criminal activity, also from the government into the 12th house. Um, so it made the past 14 years quite corrupt in a potency level of severity um, with a planet such as Pluto coming from the 10th house of government and moving into the 12th house. This transit also brought power and control issues to our attention, leading us to relearn and redefine our relationship with power and control in these areas of our lives and country, as mentioned above. Now, during this transformational process, Pluto revealed and helped address unhealthy psychological patterns that have been subconsciously controlling us, as well as corruption, crime, and many vices and their underlying sources of wounds that need to be forgiven and healed in order to transform. We found ourselves triggered by past issues, and some may have experienced difficulties in connecting with others or being understood, caused by old past behavior patterns. Now, Pluto's presence in this house can also put attention to issues related to secret enemies, also rape, and illegal under-the-table manners by those in power, as Pluto in the Radix, as I mentioned, sits in the 10th of government and moved to the 12th for 14 years. It is possible that the government will experience some form of rejection, death, or ending during a transit like this, and so it seems as it reaches this climactic end of the sign of Capricorn, time, with added emphasis, with South Africa going through its Saturn return, February 2024. Forgiveness, confronting corruption and hate, purging the old and rebuilding our sense of unity and purpose will allow us to grow and rebuild a strong foundation 
for what Pluto may bring in its entry now into our first house of Aquarius, the water bearer. On March 23rd, Pluto moved into our first house of Aquarius for a brief stay until June 11th, moving in and out of Capricorn and Aquarius until its permanent stay that I am marking from around January 20th, 2024. Now, during this time, we can receive a bit of foreshadowing while Pluto is now here until June of the issues and topics we may be seeing in the world and in our country for the next 20 years to unfold. Now, Pluto's long transit in Aquarius can reshape our identity as a country. It can bring up wounds that need healing. It can make us stronger. It can make us either highly liked or highly disliked as a country, more disciplined, realistic, and objective. However, it may also bring intense events in all areas of our lives, including governmental, political, legislative, financial, the country's direction, our allies and partnerships, our resources, land and energy, and our traditions, our foundation. It will affect mainly the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth houses, the first house, the country and its inhabitants as a whole, its general condition of prosperity and health, or the reverse, the fourth house, which covers the land, the owners of it, the, and the workers on it, the crops, the produce of the land, mines, buildings, the, the people as contrasted with the monarch, the democracy as contrasted with the aristocracy, the opposition in parliament, so the seventh house, which covers foreign affairs, relations with other countries, whether friendly or hostile, political or commercial, the national marriage and divorce rate as well. The 10th house, the monarch or president, the government, the people in authority, royalty, um, eminent and famous persons, the national trade, the national reputation, credit and power, and also the public employment rate. Now, it is important to use any power gained from this transit responsibly because we have to remember that the power is coming from the 10th house of government and it is moving into and onto the people. And it can also be connected to international power dynamics as we also have Jupiter in our 10th house. So any power gained from this transit must be used responsibly as abuse of power can have negative consequences. The government and rulers can go through a deeply transformational time. Physical changes to the country can also be expected if other cycles and transits coincide. Relations and harmonious connections with other countries and trade could become more challenging. This is a self-improvement phase, and while it may be difficult, it is a time to take control of our country and its autonomy again. Control measures could come in. It is important to watch out for cruelty and force and to be mindful of power dynamics. We may feel a sense of powerlessness or powerfulness during this time. Pluto will force us to confront our inner and our spiritual dimensions, which we may have avoided. This transit is a rebirth of self-acceptance and accepting what we cannot control while surrendering the rest to a higher power. Now, transiting Pluto will not exactly conjunct our ascendant degree in this specific chart until 2029. When Pluto conjuncts the ascendant in an astrological chart, it is considered a significant transit that can bring about profound changes in a person 
or a country's life. And using whole sign houses, we would consider this in our first house as Pluto enters Aquarius. And since it also marks the Aquarian age we are moving into, it has extra significance and marks us also as a power player in the world games of these times. Much of the transformational experience we as South Africans have become used to will soon become more of a reality to other countries of the world as well. Here are some of the themes that may be associated with Pluto conjunct the Ascendant. Transformation. This transit can be a time of deep inner transformation where old patterns and ways of being are shed and a new self emerges. Physically, this can also include our style, how we are recognized, our DNA, our flag, our approach to life, borders. Power dynamics. Pluto is associated with power and this transit may bring up issues around power dynamics, power over the people, and or at first and or we can empower ourselves to reclaim our personal power and overcome any fears that may have arisen from being controlled, overpowered, or manipulated. It can also have a powerful impact on the country and its people, as well as on a global level, promoting deep and profound healing, heightened spiritual and intuitive abilities, scientific innovation, and connections with world leadership and financial shifts and changes, especially technologically. Pluto destroys fake personas and gets to the core of everything, uncovering the hardcore truth. Ultimately, it is about taking what is bad, rotten, corrupt, or evil and bringing it out into the open and then transforming it and regenerating it like a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. And this process involves overcoming the original source of fear or destruction and transmuting it into something else and something positive. So any criminal activities, any corruption, all of that in the country itself, but especially that was in the government, involving the government and those in power, will be coming out for all to see. Pluto here also brings intensity. Pluto is an intense energy and this transit can bring up intense emotions, experiences, revolutionary events. It is also associated with powerful people and money. Aquarius is associated with technology and experimentation and the masses as well as technology, like I mentioned. <laughs> this also brings topics such as the central bank digital currency to mind, BRICS, technology in the body with also Uranus in Taurus at this time. And I would think that by the time Uranus is ready to finish its transit through Taurus, most of this will be in place. As Uranus will then be moving into Gemini, directly affecting trade and commerce in the day-to-day -day living and shopping experiences of people worldwide. It also involves regeneration. Pluto is associated with death and rebirth, and this transit can be a time of regeneration and renewal. It can also bring up topics of AI regenerating, the generation or the regeneration of the spike protein in vaccines that the masses were given. Pluto has us facing our fears. Pluto conjunct the ascendant can bring up fears and insecurities about large amounts of death, but it can also be an opportunity to face and overcome them. It also brings up the topic of control. And this transit can bring up issues around control in one's life, as well as a desire for greater control over one's circumstances, the control of powerful people, the control of technology, the inability to move around without a digital ID. These are all areas 
and topics that could be coming up with Pluto here. A financial wipeout in, the, in that is staged in order um, to bring in the new financial system. If in the wrong hands, Pluto's power can void democracy and focus on extremes. And this is where Aquarius comes in and a stronger focus on centralization. Or will we rebel? Which is the other side of Aquarius. Overall, Pluto conjunct the Ascendant can be a challenging but transformative transit that ultimately leads to greater self-awareness and personal growth. It is important to approach this transit with openness and a willingness to face any issues or challenges that may arise. But let's quickly go over what Aquarius rules and also brings to the table. Aquarius rules over a wide range of topics, which includes money, stock markets, organizations and systems, politics, and organizations and systems without a center, communications, the brain, neurons, nervous system, electricity, energy, connectivity, internet, innovation, experimentation, science, technology, AI, outer space, telepathy, channels of information, higher vibration, channels of knowledge, Akashic records, chakra openings, portals, rebellion, revolutions, extremism, freedom, unexpected, sudden surprises, not the norm, unusual events, not the expected, and so forth. Other topics related to Aquarius include sources of electricity and power, access to it, power over it, electronic censorship, eye and social credit scores, and compliance with certain rules or licensing to access what we used to. It may also lead to disability, um, disability innovations and new laws, legislation, rules, political parties, groups. People may receive invitations to join communities and share resources, doing things outside of the norm, differently and unexpectedly, and removed from normal societies. There could potentially be a societal collapse or a crisis either immediately or gradually, and then rebuilding leading to huge changes in political as well as social systems. We could also see a removal or uprising on taxes or how much one moves, walks, drives, breathes, etc. Other potential impacts of Aquarius include new supply chains and a collapse of old ones, Changes in the aviation industry, advancements in space travel, focus on cleaning pollution, mental health crisis, digital ID with both good and bad sides, new social structures, new paradigms, increasing power and control measures, and the powerful push to rebel with people uniting against the abuse of power and taking back their power. Additionally, there may be neurotic conditions related to the nervous system and a focus on back to basics, food and supply lines with Uranus in Taurus. It also rules over destructive topics such as pollution, corruption, death and rebirth, things under the ground, unseen criminals, the dark state, poison, the taboo, crisis, power, control, manipulation, sex, rape, the occult, abuse, secrets, ruthlessness, DNA, cancer, cells that mutate and change in some way. Now, upon entry of Pluto in Aquarius, we may see potential topics such as economic crisis or some kind of enslavement, AI, control over the masses, the mind, um, the energy and the power as well as hidden government controlled by not who we thought. We may experience something dramatic or upsetting as Pluto changes signs officially or as it hits our ascendant degree and starts speaking to other planets as well. If so, 
it is an opportunity to start from the ground up. This transit favors transformations and soul evolution. We get a preview of what, of what we could possibly expect in South Africa and worldwide as we enter the age of Aquarius, with Pluto leading the way, as we also watch the transits of Saturn as well as Uranus for the flavoring and the unfolding along the way. Currently, as planets change signs, they are conversing strongly with Pluto at these anoretic degrees right now. And on May 20th, there will be an exact fixed grand cross in the sky with Pluto at zero Aquarius, Mars at zero Leo, Jupiter and the North Node also um, conjunct in Taurus and the South Node in Scorpio. A, a point of powerful climax, clarity, a point of determined action towards permanent change and a point of no return in some cases. Pluto is always after the truth and truths about history will all be revealed little by little and in unexpected ways, at times shocking while he navigates his slow journey through the ethers of Aquarius. And this will be on a world scale as well as for us in our own country. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me to grow my channel and it also helps others to stay informed. May the sun shine bright on you this day. May there be blessings coming your way. Until next time. Bye-bye.